Hi friends, you had asked about learning about how to do a plan book lesson bank and so I'm going to show you some tricks that I have learned using the ULS system. This view is currently of my plan book week. Lesson banks in plan book are not easy to find. They are a stack of coins, um, which I guess is supposed to resemble a bank and is not intuitive. When you get to your lesson bank, it's going to look empty no matter how many banks you have. You will click on select bank and you will be building a lesson bank. So you will add a lesson bank. I have already done that and I have a generic ULS lesson bank that I keep. Once you have created the lesson bank, you can add as many lessons as you need. I teach the transition level of the ULS and there are 21 lessons every month that are included with that. Each month has its own theme, of course, and the story topics are different. However, there are core standards that stay the same every month. This is the information I used to create my lesson bank. So I put in all 21 lessons and I gave them very generic names. Every lesson number one is lesson one. Uh, it's part of the Daily Living Club in the Transition Band, and we start with a topic story. Each month in transition, we have two topic stories, several articles, and the standards that go along with these. I don't want you to be confused about the standards. These standards that are shown on my screen are ULS standards for transition band. If you are teaching a high school band, uh, a middle school or elementary school band, you're going to see where um, on your ULS lessons that they will have the essential elements on there. When you go to build your lesson and you title it here, you say, okay, we're going to call it daily living skills. When you go to your standards, and you click add standards. Mine is set here to unique learning system because that is what I use for my framework. However, you can get that changed so that it is the common core. That is all up to you what it says. You have, there's lots and lots of standards that Planbook has and they're adding more and more and more all of the time. So you can see here where they have the United States Common Core Essential Elements. So if that's something that your state uses or it's a version of, I am in Michigan, so they call them the career and college readiness, but they read the same and are aligned the same. You can click on those and um, the all of the other standards that fall under it for language arts and math will be in your framework. I'm not going to do that because this is not the frame that I use and I don't want to mess up my account. However, you can see here, um, if, when you have that, you can choose your grade band, um, what subject you are using, um, and then your category. So in, in the transition bands, we have things like employability, daily living, and other bands, you're going to have things like mathematics and reading. To add the standard to your lesson, you just highlight it. Fun tip, you can highlight more than one. You don't have to add them one at a time. You can put on as many of them as you'd like to have on. So don't waste your time. Click, add, click, add, click, add. Go down, add them all, and that's that. So I went ahead and built in my 21 lessons that are generic into my lesson bank. This is my big time time saver, easy way to do things. Once I have my generic lesson bank built, um, and I guess I should say to do that, I went into the unique system and I went to the PDFs and I downloaded every single PDF. And I do this every month, not because I'm changing standards. I am not making extra work for myself with that, but I will show you what we will do with those in just a minute. But when you build your generic lesson bank, when you download your lesson and you open it up in the PDF, 
it's going to show you the standards that are being used. So here, um, since again, this is transition band, it says lifelong learning, we're doing reading, personal life, and the, the targets we're hitting with that. You can see here building word recognition that happens with every time that we read to our students, nice generic standard. We don't have anything specific about emotions for lifelong learning, so there's no reason to change that. Now, in my regular um, generic lesson bank, we're not going to see anything other than generic standards that apply to when you do reading. Makes it nice and easy. It is not every standard that is on the actual lesson. Each month, I go to my copy tool on plan book and I copy from my lesson bank, which is my generic ULS lessons. And I will create a new bank. You can see on my banks list here that I have my October and I have my November. When I copy all of my lessons into my November bank, I am able to go to my lesson banks and yes, it is a generic copy of everything that we just have. Be patient. It gets cool. When we get into the making the copy with November, I now can customize it specifically for this month. You will see where all of those PDFs that I downloaded, I am able to add to my lesson. I did not have to retype my heading. I did not have to re-add my standards. I attached this lesson. If I wanted to be super overachiever, I could go in and add all of the specific standards that are for this, these lessons. And maybe one day I will be ambitious and do that. Right now I am just saving time and working with the generic standards. So once I have my November bank created, and you can see where I have all of these. And a, uh, a tip that makes it easy, when you download these lessons from Unique, they are just going to download as lesson one, lesson two, lesson three. When you upload them to PlanBook, they will upload as lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, which is not helpful the second month you have lessons uploaded. So when I download my lessons, I go into my downloads file and I add the month in front of it. So I know that these are the November lessons, the October lessons, just keeps things cleaner so that I don't have to guess which month am I putting up. So now that I have my entire November created with my generic standards, all PDFs attached, I can go to my unique lessons and they have a suggested monthly plan PDF. I see no need to reinvent the wheel. I use this to help me with my layout. That does not mean I do not tweak it, but it is something that I use to help me figure out how these activities are applied. In years previous when I have used Unique, I have taught one lesson and thought, oh, okay, I've done my Unique um, target for the day and that's what we need to do. What I have discovered is I am underutilizing it when I do it that way. If you follow the sequencing that Unique has, there is a lot of repetition. Um, I do mine in centers, so it really gets repetitious when you're reading the same story two times to each small group that you're working with. But um, the students enjoy the repetition and it really does build on itself. So we can see here for lifelong learning, on day one, we are doing lesson one, activity one. It is a read aloud. The students that I currently work with, with self-selected reading, that would be a difficult activity for them to sustain for 15 to 20 minutes. Most of my students are not able to read, although they do enjoy looking at books and magazines. Um, doing it for that extended amount of time is a challenge for them. So I choose to not do activity four. Your classroom might be different. It might be a better fit. So when I go to my plan book, and I want to scooch forward to November to work on things. 
I just take my calendar forward. Um, I have built in lesson banks for all of my routine classes, the morning core time, the morning meetings, all of those fun things. Um, when you create your lesson bank and you add a lesson, you can um, type that lesson up once and copy it four times into the same lesson bank and so that way your lesson blank ha or bank has one week at a time so every time you just copy it you you've laid out a week you can make this the morning meeting or the morning core or morning meeting t um lessons you can have enough for a month if you want to um that's all personal choice and, and however far ahead you like to plan things um out i like to do things big picture for the month at a time um, other things that I use um, when I am doing the plan book, I will add standards for things that I am not necessarily teaching, but where the standards are going to be at. Um, my students have breakfast in the morning, and, and that lines up with some of the ULS personal life um, things, making nutritionist choices, um, being able to um, manage their time, knowing that they, you know, if they dawdle, they're not going to have enough time to finish their breakfast, things like that. These are real life applications for the teaching that we do. To just add standards and not write anything like that, you just use um, a template and you go into add template, you'll choose your class and you can either write a lesson or use standards. A flaw with template, you can't do both. If you want to do both, like what my um, morning core has, or my, um, you can see where I have standards here at the bottom, as well as a lesson that I have written, and even a core material from PDF that we use with this. This is done with a lesson bank, not a template. So I, I am a huge lesson bank fan. So moving forward into November, morning rotations, I'm focusing here on daily living skills, which when I look at my transition band the first day, I'm doing lesson one, activity one. So in plan book, I can go into my copy. I'm going to copy lessons from myself, and I'm going to copy out of my November ULS bank. This is where it can be very cool. Um, I actually have friends who are teachers in other districts and in my building where we link up and we can share things and copy back and forth. Um, that can be very fun and a time saver if you can find a buddy to do that with you. So the center that I'm building is the daily living skills. So I'm going to copy it to that class. So if I look on my lesson plan, we're going to do lesson one on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday this week. So there are three different activities that will happen with this lesson. So when I go to this, I'm going to copy lesson one to lesson one, and I am going to insert it starting on, um, and let me see how my calendar falls here, on Monday the 30th. So we're gonna start it on the 30th and it's going to copy and plan book can take a while don't get frustrated do not think that it is you um who is doing something wrong if you get on during peak times sundays especially i avoid sundays like the plague <coughs> excuse me because sundays are just awful it seems that everyone wants to get online and do their lesson planning that night I am making this video on a Friday night because I am a nerdy teacher who does not go out but I can get my plan book done quickly so I've just copied lesson one three times for Monday Tuesday and Wednesday into my regular plans so I'm gonna go back to my plans so you can see what that looks like because at this point in time on my lesson plans we will see it with the generic standards and the PDF. That is not a bad thing to have, but if I want to be able to show that I'm not just doing the same thing every day, I can come in here and in the lesson I can say introduce story. If I can spell it right. 
So introducing story. That's all I'm going to do that day. I'm just going to read the story. Easy as that. The next day where it comes in, um, I can go ahead and put in that I am doing activity one or activity two, and I keep it just that brief. The PDF that is attached will have every activity that is on it for every day that I put it in. That's okay for me. I don't mind because my administration can look at this and they can say, oh, okay, yes, she's doing lesson one. She's introducing the story. We're going to go over the vocabulary. We're going to read the story a few times. We'll talk about the characters and the theme and our big idea. This day here on this Tuesday, when we add it in, I may, you know, have it say um, activity one comprehension questions. I keep my descriptions very simple because really and truly all of the good meat and potatoes of the lesson, um, the differentiation, all of those good things are in the PDF. I'm not going to waste my time redoing those because the PDF is attached for anybody who wants to get that in depth and take a look and see at what we're doing. So in a nutshell, that is how I do it. I can go through and copy everything into my different centers, making sure that the daily living skills match with daily living skills. Um, one center that I have that I um, have used inspiration with from ULS is my daily buzz. They do that um, more with the idea of the take home communication books. I use mine with a core uh, material that you can find on ULS. Um, and using and watching the news. So that's my daily buzz because my students are not um, really able to write or be involved as much with um, creating their own notes home. And those who do, we do it verbally at the end of the day. So in a nutshell, that is how it is done to lay out for a month. Um, the better, the more you practice it, the better you get at it. Um, plan book is glitchy. If you work on it for more, much more than a half an hour at a time, sometimes it really gets bogged down. So if you're starting to notice that instead of getting frustrated, it's best to just log off, take a break, go back, and start again for another half hour, 45 minutes. Um, again, the, the peak times of, of using it that you would think of, you know, your Saturday nights and your Sundays are best to avoid. Um, Wednesday nights and Friday nights, I have found it's a lot smoother sailing. Um, while I love plan book and I think it is a huge, great tool, um, I think it's important that we recognize that it has these glitches. So people who are not um, fluent with technology or, or are quick to blame themselves for things, do not do that with this and get frustrated and give up on it. So um, I hope this has been helpful. If you need more information, let me know. This was my first go at it and I appreciate your support.